Well, this is teaching number six in the Ascension of Christ series. I think it probably will go on for maybe two or three more. We'll see. Whenever I think I've um, sort of come to the end of something, I get more revelation. You see, you need to teach from revelation. There comes a time to learn from Bible studies and other things, but, but we, need to, we need to learn by the, and from our teacher, the Holy Spirit. And so I, I wait on the Lord. I go into his classroom. I wait for him to come and take the desk at the front. I wait for my teacher to sit down and begin to instruct me through the word, through pictures, through revelation, meaning revealed relationship. So revelation cannot be imparted without a relationship, first with Christ and then with one another in the body of Christ, or else we take the revelation in the wrong situation. And so I, I'm presenting to you something today. I never taught on this before. I got just fresh revelation on a single word. And I always like those. I'd like to begin in John 129. Now, the testimonies and some of the worship has already uh, uh, talked about what I'm going to teach on, and that's a nice confirmation for me because I am not above humbling myself to the body before I present something. You can have something to present to the body, but you know the body can change it before you get to it. And it may be for another time or it might need to be renovated. So I always take my messages, and I'm instructing you as teachers. You, I always take my messages and I always fit them in and massage them and, and with what is happening in the body that day. Right? Okay. You can say, thank you, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> John 1.29. And John was walking along, and, and the first word out of his mouth was, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the whole world. Behold. So that started to intrigue me. The Holy Spirit took out his highlighter, and he highlighted it in bright yellow so I couldn't get away from it when I read that scripture. He didn't focus on the lamb. He didn't focus on the taking away the sins. He focused on behold. Without the behold, the rest of it, John said, has to be beheld. So I looked up the word behold. Behold. Behold means literally to receive the message in what we are seeing. To learn through continual gaze. More than only looking, it is to see as to have an impact on the viewer. To see as in to be impacted and learn in the heart. Behold, to receive the message in what we are seeing. John didn't say, see the lamb. He didn't say, look at the lamb. He said, behold the lamb. It's a different word in Greek. And it means what this what this definition just said. Behold. To see with the heart. We've been teaching on the ascension of Christ. Where, he, where is he now? He's at the right hand of the Father in glory, glorified, whatever that means. 
He's full of majesty. He has many crowns on his head. He is the king of all nations, the king of all earth, the king of everyone and all creation. That's where he is now. He's also still the Lamb of God on the throne, slain since the foundation of the world with wounds still on him that once killed him, but he still has them in heaven. Now John says further in his gospel in chapter 1 something that builds on this. He talks about in the beginning was the word and he goes through that and we don't have time to, to take that apart. But he says something interesting in verse 14. It says, we all beheld his glory on the earth. The beholding was open to everyone. All the disciples beheld Christ. They didn't see him. They beheld him. When they looked at him, all the way through the resurrection, all the way through to his ascension into heaven, when they beheld all of that, they got the message. And I would just like to say Paul especially, because he wrote so much of the New Testament, he wrote it from beholding the glory of God. How do we know that? How do we know that? We know that from Acts chapter 26. When he's riding along in a donkey, going to put everybody in prison in the churches in where he's going, it says the glory of heaven shone around him and he was struck to the ground. And he said, Lord, Lord. And Jesus spoke to him out of the glory and said, you're persecuting me. And Paul beheld the glory to such an extent that he was blinded. And it says in that chapter that he couldn't see from that moment on. And it had to be led by the hand into the city. Friends, beholding the glory cancels out your earthly sight. Who do you want to see anyway? Do you want to just see you? Do you want to just see me? We want to behold the glory of Christ. And our vision will be as it were lessened to the things of the earth. That's why John could say we beheld his glory, the glory of the ascended Christ in his full light. That glory was so great upon Paul, he was blinded to normal things. And Paul says in Acts 26, he says further, he says, and when he, remember when he appears before King Agrippa? because he's being accused of preaching an, another king and, and not the God of Israel. And he says, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What vision was that? Beholding the glory. Beholding the glory transformed his entire life. To the point where it became a vision. Are you beholding the ascended Christ to the extent so much during your days and your weeks? Are you beholding the ascended Christ to the extent that it changes your whole life and vision? It did for Paul. He said, I was obedient to it. When we behold the glory and the majesty and the ascension and the great work of Jesus Christ now, when we behold that, guess what? There's an obedience that comes to that. Not because Jesus in heaven looks down and goes, Collins, obey me. When I look to him, I say, I am changed. 
I am transformed in my beholding. That's what the word beholding means, to get the message in what I'm seeing. Let's not only look at Jesus. Let's not only look at him on the cross or look at him as the lamb or look at him as the king or look all of the names and the, and the pictures that the Holy Spirit has given us. Let's not look. Let's not idly gaze with kind of so-so faith. Let's look at the heavenly vision of the ascended Christ and let's behold him. And I'll get to how to behold him in a minute. Beholding is simple faith working in our soul to put our attention on the ascended Christ. If we reflect and behold Jesus, we are seeing the Father as well. You remember John in chapter 14, the, the, the two disciples come to him and go, he goes, I'm going to a place you can't come to now, but in my father's house are, there is a mansion in heaven. I can't sing too much or on, the, on the video or else it'll get grabbed for copyright violations. Otherwise, I'd sing the whole song to you. Because there's a mansion in heaven and Jesus was preaching that to his disciples. And, th and they said, Jesus, we don't know where you're going. Where is this mansion? We haven't seen the Father. What do you mean you're, we see the Father? This is after three and a half years of being stuck like glue on Jesus. They didn't behold him yet. They didn't see him with a message of what he was trying to do. He said, disciples, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. When we behold Christ, we behold the Father. That's the message in looking at Christ. That's just a freebie and a side. How do we behold Christ? If all of these things are true, And we all can behold him. How do we do that? First, we behold him. Now, we're not just looking. This isn't a, a video that you can pause when you want. It's an impartation that he pauses when he wants. By communing, communing with him in prayer and worship by communing with him in prayer and worship let's turn to 2 Corinthians 3.18 or sitting relaxed quietly do you have a favorite chair or a favorite place or under a tree or in a corner of your room or somewhere where you go where you, where you go there and you go that's my Jesus place when I go there, I am beholding. I am not just Bible studying, reading. I am beholding. I'm going there to commune with Christ. I'm going to sit relaxed, quiet, fold my hands, put my legs out. I am going to attend to his presence I am going to remember him by dropping down and, and communing in my spirit down in my gut. I'm going to drop down where Christ has filled me with his spirit and I'm going to be there with him and I am going to gaze on Christ here in me, the hope of glory. Now, heaven is not geographic. It's not far away. Heaven is right here. It's not a geography, it's a simple change of dimension. When we behold Christ, when we desire to behold him, when we 
begin to gaze at him and not break our gaze. I read a story this week. I shared it with Pastor Cheryl about as a well-known preacher who was writing about being distracted. And, and his, he had a favorite football team, and that favorite football team was in the playoffs, and they were on the TV, and he had like, a, I don't know, a six-year-old daughter. And he thought it was a huge sacrifice to invite her to come and watch the game with him. And so she's sitting there, Daddy, 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 you know what happened today? Daddy, Daddy, this and that. And Oh, God, do you see that? Oh, oh you want to see what I did today and what, what Mommy and I did? And he's going, uh, uh, yes, yes, honey, yes, honey, yes, honey. And then the, the quarterback's about to make the star play and the, the ball's in the air. And, and she goes, Daddy, I want to see your eyes. Are you listening? And he goes, where do six-year-old girls learn this stuff? It's a woman thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hint for you guys, us guys. Eye contact is beholding. If you have eye contact for more than a second, you begin to behold, not look. How many of us would like to be beheld? And then... In that beholding, the message of what we see is received. So we go into this place communing with God, either walking around, sitting down, but we are not just looking. We are holding. We are centering. The Catholic Church has what's called centering prayer. It's, it's, the, it's an ancient church tradition that they've passed on. It's where, where you're inside and you're clear and you're connected and you're listening and you're gazing at Christ. Your mind's not wandering. And we're not gazing at him on the cross. We're gazing at him in his ascension and glory and his finished work and his power and what he, how he wants to connect with us from that place. So uh, Hebrews, well, I have two places I want to go at, at once. <laughs> uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, let's go there first. You, you may have read this passage before. I think I've taught on it many times. Verse 18, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Plenty of people have taught on this. You've probably heard messages about, about the mirror and seeing ourselves in the mirror. Whether or not this means that or not, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing it does mean. When you get in front of that reflective piece of glass and you are beholding it, when you are beholding it, the message you get is we all are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, can I share something wonderful with you? on top of wonderful? How many of you would like to change something? I don't know, your shoes? <laughs> this passage says, when we behold the ascended Christ, We are transformed. Now, you didn't do anything. You're not working the Ten Commandments. You have decided to yield your, your heart and your soul and your inner longing and behold Him. And as our gaze is fixed on Christ. That connection transforms us to be like what we are beholding. 
Now this is fortunately a heavenly principle that people on earth have tried to manipulate. Whatever we watch and fix our eyes on, we slowly become. So let's save the beholding for the ascended Christ, knowing that as we behold him, we are assimilating, transforming power from the glory of Christ. John says, and we all have received grace for grace, the degree of glory to degree of glory. We are being transformed in stages as we gaze deeply at the ascended Christ. Beholding him is not, I wrote in my notes, beholding him is not that we may only know more about the ascended Christ, but that in our knowing we might live it. Now let me say that. All, all of this teaching, all of these things is not, all, we must know the ascended Christ, but it's not for you and me to sit here and just know Christ. We must live a transformed life. And he does the transforming as we behold him in his glory. Let me take that one step further and let me put a foundation stone in your theology. All of the heavenly vision of the ascended Christ in his majesty is meant to secure and enable our yielding obedience. Paint your picture of Christ that your soul might attach itself to it from the word of God and it will enable and secure your obedience. Have you had, been having trouble with obedience on anything? The way to secure your obedience is to behold Christ. Not just look at Christ. Oh, well, I tried that, Pastor, and that didn't work. I'm talking about getting down with Christ in a special place on a regular basis and carry that out through your day and be transformed in your living. We are actually given the ability to live and to change from looking and beholding and gazing at Christ. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes. Jesus lifted up his eyes and he saw the Father. Stephen, the deacon, lifted up his eyes when he was dying and he beheld Christ in his glory, the ascended Christ, and he fell asleep. He just went up, went on. The New Testament is full of people who have seen Jesus and then have beheld what they saw. As I behold him, obedience is easy. As my wife said to me earlier this week that helped me so much, condemnation is saying you're bad and you can't obey. Conviction is saying you are better than this. Boy, that really helped me. It's like, yeah, I, I, I have a, I, I see Christ. Look at him. That, that's me. I'm being transformed into that. I'd like to close with behold and be like. That's a simple way to sum this up. Well, you just behold already? Behold. 
Because if you do, you'll be like him. Behold and be like. Live in the sight of the Lord. Catch his spirit. Don't focus on yourself. Paul says a few beautiful words in Hebrews. He talks about Christ being, you know, the, uh, all things are going to be brought unto Christ and he's the head and all. He, he, he glorifies and, and he's, he's magnifying Christ. And, and all of this stuff that's going on around the world during his time. And he just says, Four words that captivated me. He said, after all this stuff and these things, and he says, but we see Jesus. <laughs> but we, but. We see Jesus. The people that he was with were beholders. And in the midst of the chaos and the gospel and the writing and everything, Paul and the writer of Hebrews agreed. We are beholding. the glory of the Lord and are being transformed from glory to glory. Lift up your eyes. Don't just glance around. Don't give him a passing quick blink. Can we be a people who are beholding the Lamb of God? Receiving the message that's nonverbal and nonvisual when we connect with Him. The message is I will transform you, I will give you grace, I will give you glory, I will give you mercy. Come and learn from me. Amen. Amen. We behold you now, Lord, King, Lamb. So much happens when we behold you. Strengthen us, encourage us, enable us. You know, he is the divine enabler. Transform us, renew us. Freedom, 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 freedom as we behold you. Thank you, Lord, for assimilating us into your presence until we become so much like you. Amen.